All right, everyone, welcome you to another sit down in the Coliseum. I have a very, very, very special guest in today. Um, I think she will be the first female on the Coliseum, in the Coliseum, should I say, Miss Barbara Lee. And as always, I start every single conversation with the story as to how I met the person who I'm interviewing, because most of the people I interview, I met at some point. So as some of you know, I got into the sport of piloting fairly late, uh, late being my early 30s. Most people start in their 20s, all right? So I uh, got, in, got in around my early 30s, and by this time, a lot of people are already established. Ms. Lee was already one of them. Um, I'll talk about how many times she's competed in a moment, which is freaking crazy in my opinion. <laughs> so she's one of the first people who I noticed in the game. I started learning about it. I mean, Larry Wheels of the world, you know, boom, boom. But in the female side, it was Barbara Lee was one of the top. So I started following her page. I was like, man, she's intense as fuck. She looks mean, though. But fuck it, all right, it's cool, right? <laughs> so a year or two goes by. And like, you know, it's a little bit of motivation. I, I like the intensity in her lifts. Like she was, like she would tell she really, really loved to live and love what she was doing. And it was just very intense. And I'm a very intense person too. So it, it worked out. So um, years passed. And finally, I think it's 2018 or 19, I get the privilege to compete with her uh, at the Pioneer. 17. 17. All right, 17 at the Pioneer, right? So I'm backstage. I don't want to use the term fanboy. I want fanboy and like whatever. Everybody's locked in backstage. But right. I'm seeing people, because this is my first, I say this is my first. This is my second big meet, but this meet has some of the biggest names in the world in it. I mean, Yuri Belkin, Barbara was there, Dan Bell. I mean, you name it, they were there, right? Um, and so in the back, I'm focused, but I'm seeing people walk by. And Barbara walks by because women, they've competed a little bit earlier, so they're already there. And she's like, mm, like, mm, just me. Like, she's locked the fuck in, right? I said, nah, I ain't talking to her ever. Like, fuck that. She's cool. I'll follow her. I'm a fan. It is what it is. And then after the meet, uh, we ended up speaking and she was one of the nicest people in the world. And since then we've been somewhat cool and immediately like we you know converse every now and then via DM about the lip, we were about the sport and stuff like that. But very cool person. Uh, I thought she was scary as hell for about three or four years though. I really did. I'll be honest with you. I get that a lot. But she is very badass, man. So we talked a little bit off camera. We got a few topics we're gonna cover. But the first thing I want to talk about is how does a person compete 32 times and still have the same intensity, the same will, the same drive to still do it. Like that's crazy. 32 times, I'm like, all right, cool. That's 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 dumb. For me, I think the first three or four years competing were kind of just, what the hell am I doing again? What is this sport? Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know any better. I had a coach that came from a, a anytime fitness that swore he knew about powerlifting. He had read West Side Barbell Book of Methods. And, that's what he knew. and so that's how I trained. And yeah. it was horrible. I hurt all the time. And I just was like, man, this doesn't feel right. I see these girls are in lifters and people doing this. Can we try that? No, we use chucks. We do this. This is it. So my first year was I bombed out of my very first meet. There's one meet that is not on that list that you see. Um, but yeah, it was just. I was trying to find myself. I came from a very insecure, self-conscious, self-loathing place. And when I found powerlifting, it was like, I'm shy. Believe it or not, outside the intensity, YouTube, I'm talking to a camera. I'm not talking to anybody. <laughs> so it's not the same. Mm. Um, I'm shy. And so my first few years competing, it was, I don't want people to look at me. Oh God, I got to put what on and I have to do what in front of people. I couldn't even imagine bodybuilding, but I was like, don't make a face. Don't strain. Don't make a noise. You don't want people to notice you come in, do your lift and leave. And then I actually found a coach that act that made me focus on mental toughness mm -hmm. and trying to figure out how to flip that switch. And so I went from being the quietest in the gym to you're going to hear me if I'm in the gym. Mm. And it was not a good thing. It was over the top ridiculous. But again, I'm zero or 100. So I don't know the middle. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it wasn't until probably 2015. I started 2013. So 2015, 2016, that I started kind of feeling like, okay, I think I can do pretty well in this. But the thing that motivated me the most was there were women coming up to me at my gym back home in Louisiana, telling me that I was motivating them telling me that I was helping them not feel scared to lift because I still looked like a woman, whatever mm -hmm. that means. Um, but also 
finding a support system that I didn't have with my friends and family that I had before because my family was saying negative stuff. I look like a man, not supposed to have a six pack, like just coming from a family that has heart disease, drug abuse, alcohol abuse, mm-hmm. diabetes, you know, just the whole ringer obesity. And then I'm the only person in my family that works out. I'm the only one that is starting to not wanting want to go out every weekend and drink. And you lose people along the journey. And in the beginning, it was hard. But even now, I still get nervous. I still get nervous yeah. because I love it that much. And it means a lot to me to do well. So I don't take it for granted at all. There's no meat I've ever gone into thinking, I have this in the bag or these lifts are going to be easy. Like you can get hurt squatting 135. Yeah. So I never get under the bar in the gym or on the platform taking anything for granted. And I don't always think you can do this next time. I treat every training session like it's the only training session and I treat every meet like it's the last one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, following your page, I mean, I had the privilege to see you on, on the platform in person. You're very intense. I've never seen you on the platform that you did bring the same intensity. And then when we follow your page, you could tell that your workouts, you, you're dialed in. Um, I know you train, train alone sometimes, like I guess during the pandemic, everybody trained in the garage for a while. Me, myself personally, trying to try, trying to train in a garage alone, I, I'd go nuts. I, w- I wouldn't be able to find that fire. I need to be in the room with people. So that's admirable to me. Um, so yeah, I, I, I don't know, man. But so you mentioned Louisiana, where are you from? How did you get to where you are now? Because it's like you yeah. have a little trick across the country. <laughs> um, I'm in California, so I'm a diehard 49ers fan. Oh, man. And then I grew up in Louisiana. So mm-hmm. I support the Saints second. Okay. Um, but I moved to Houston in 2016. 2016. And have been there pretty much since then. I've been in Georgia for a few months. Mm-hmm. And I'm missing, I'm missing Texas. I never thought I would yeah. say that, but yeah. So who yeah, knows? It's, it's funny you talk about being in a family, kind of going back to that, talk about being in a family of people who, who don't understand what you do. I went through some, some, something similar. Uh, I didn't have a, I don't have a very, I, should, I have a big family. I don't have a very tight knit family. And me and my father, we're like this, like my father raised me, um, you know, uh, my mom, I lost my mom when I was a child. So I was like four. So my dad raised me. So he and I were super tight. So I knew when I started lifting that he didn't understand it, but he's, he's the kind, he's going to support anything until, to a fault anyway. Like he seen me like, right, look, so you got to pull this shit back. But <laughs> <laughs> he was like, all right, I'm gonna watch it. So um, he watched a couple of my local meets. He came, but I could tell he just didn't have that, you know, it was like, all right, I'm here. All right. I think I'm full of clap now. I don't know that type of shit. Right. And then when I went to the current the first time, he didn't, he, he couldn't make the trip to California. Uh, and and my, my dad watched every single sporting event I've ever done in my entire life, except for one before that one. And I played from Little League baseball throughout collegiate football, every game I ever played. And so I was like, okay, cool. But I could tell he really wasn't as hurt about missing that as he would have been about hurt missing a football game. Again, not quite understanding it, right? Then the first time uh, I competed on a live stream was when we competed together at the Pioneer, the well, second time, but at the Pioneer when I broke the record. It's like, that, that's when it clicked for him. Because he started looking at my page and he was like, man, people really like, admire what you do. Like, yeah, it's, kind of, it's, 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 it's kind of a cult, you know, it's kind of a cult following. I said, you know, and, and so I get it. And then the other thing too is, it's funny how people who aren't doing, I don't want to say aren't doing the right thing, but they'll find a way to find fault in you doing the right thing to make themselves feel better for doing the wrong thing, right? You know, so um, yeah, I'm, and I'm not, you anyway, know, I'm not trying to talk about anybody specifically, but you know, hypothetically speaking, you know, here I am over here, you know, shoving whoppers in my mouth every day, you know, I'm sick, I, all this, but I'm gonna complain about you having a six pack. Make it make sense, right? right? So I've been there, I get it, I get it. It's funny you mentioned that about people giving you looks. I say, you know, I've heard women talk about you, um, I guess I didn't tell you that early before we got on, but I heard women talk about you. One thing a lot of women I think have admired about you is what I've heard women say is they they enjoy the fact that you still keep a very feminine, um, you know, look, a very feminine, everything. Like you're still a, a woman. All right. Obviously everyone is, but everyone is one is a woman, but they admire the fact that you can still keep that softness. I call it that. Look for the right word. Yeah. So how do you think you've been able to do that? I mean, obviously, you know, it's diets and maybe training style, maybe just taking care of yourself, but Aside from that, how would you say it's you've been able to balance that? 
it's hard because I've talked about this before, I think on another podcast, but I've definitely talked to other women about it. Mm-hmm. I do know that I have body dysmorphia. So I never see myself the way other people see me. Mm-hmm. So I always think I need to lose weight. And then it got to a point to where I started having issues with anorexia and bulimia, the binge and purge, like drink all weekend and then Sunday starve myself and stay on the elliptical or the treadmill just because I need to make weight on Monday or my trainer is going to give me a punished workout. Like it was just one thing I love about powerlifting is it has helped me appreciate my body for what it can do and not what it looks like. Mm. Because when I was so focused on what it looks like, I was never happy. It didn't matter how big, how small, I always thought something was wrong. And so I've, I started looking at women bodybuilders and I was like, okay, so you can be pretty and have muscle, mm-hmm. but there were also some things that I li- didn't like. And so I was like, okay, that's a little too much for me. Mm-hmm. I still want my butt to jiggle a little bit. I like <laughs> to have my big thighs, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. So for me, it was kind of like, I'm not, I'm not going to lie. I don't do a lot of cardio. I need to for my heart health. I do know that, but I hate it. It's boring. You can put me doing a set of 10, five sets of 10 before you can ask me to go get on the treadmill. Oh, yeah. yeah, I just hate it. Um, but I think too, as far as what we do in our sport, everybody knows PEDs exist. Okay. Less is more. That's what yeah. I'll say. I, 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 I try to appreciate I, the guys all the time, yeah. I've never wanted to be a hard body. I have done different stuff in my career. And these last two years, I figured out what has worked for me. And it is better than anything I've ever done. Mm -hmm. I'm not losing my hair. I don't have a face full of acne. I don't have my voice sounding 10 octaves lower. Mm -hmm. It's just, and also that comes with a sacrifice because I know with my work ethic, the numbers I'm putting up right now, how much better could they be if, you know, if you just do a little more, if you just dabble, if you just, but I told myself a long time ago, my goal is not to be number one in the sport. It's just not. My goal coming into this has always been show women that we belong here, show women that we can look good doing it and that we can support each other doing it. Somebody being a 181er or a 220 lifter can be my best friend and I can go head to head with them if we're talking dots or somebody who's smaller than me can actually be stronger than me and it's no hate like damn what you doing I need to get on your program or whatever but just to hear so many women say they don't have support and people don't get it I've had doctors tell me I need to hang it up I need to quit because I've had different injuries that weren't really threatening to my career but it was just constant nagging stuff that they were telling me could threaten my quality of life yeah this is my quality of life yeah I had my kid already my son is 22 years old I'm not having any more babies <laughs> I'm not worried about chasing I have grandkids now I actually have two. Oh wow um, okay yeah I have a son a grandson Kingston will be he just turned two in July yes and then Jada Lane was just born in September so mm-hmm. Yeah, I gotta. I can't crawl around on the floor too long because my knee still hurts from surgery two years yeah. ago, but I can manage, you know, and I don't know if it's just because growing up, the my parents both died at a young age for mm-hmm. them. Like my mom was 50, yeah, she died on her birthday, 53. Yeah, that's young. Um, my dad died a few years ago, a couple years ago during COVID. Mm-hmm. Um and he wasn't 60 yet. And then my grandmother died, she was 63. So I'm not saying I know I'm gonna die young, but I don't know. Yeah, you don't. Right, so I'm not looking at what I'm gonna do when I'm 70, what I'm gonna do when I'm 80. I'm looking at where I am right now, what I wanna accomplish, and that's what I'm living for. So I just, I want everybody to, take advantage and not be scared, you know, and it's more for women. Don't worry about what somebody's going to say, who's not going to like it. At the end Mm. of the day, they go to their house, they're doing what they want to do. So if you want to lift, if you want to put on a little bit of muscle, 
muscle looks good on everybody. I don't know yeah. who started the stereotype where you can't look good with them, but it's a lie. And <laughs> you have to go on and embrace it. Exactly. I uh, I definitely want to move to to uh, the topic of women in power at the next because I'm very excited about what I'm seeing what I what I'm seeing go on. But I want to touch on something. You made me just realize something as you were talking. You just really helped me out. Yeah, that's why I kind of looked up in the sky for a moment, like it just clicked. So you talk about having body dysmorphia, you know, and, and I most definitely suffer from it. And I really think most people in the fitness industry probably do, if they had to be honest with themselves. Uh, that's also what makes some of the greatest great because they have body dysmorphia. Uh, but you're right. When you said you started focusing more on what your body could do than what it looked like. I think for me, I, I was realizing that I probably would never look like I wanted to look. So therefore I was, I never, was never gonna be happy with it. Now to other people, I may have looked, I don't know what I look like to them, but I knew that by training, I could make my body do what I liked it could do. And then that's when I started getting more fulfillment. And I think that's when it really, I just like put my foot on the gas in the sport. Yeah. Um, I got such a high out of just like, man, I could do some shit that not everybody on the earth can do. And like that right. meant a lot. Um, that was dope. Yes, yeah, so when you said that, it really clicked. That's why I, I was like, oh shit, she just hit me. Right there. Yeah. Like, you, gotta <laughs> yeah. you gotta send me an invoice, man, for my psychiatry uh, treatment today. <laughs> so women in powerlifting. I'm super excited about it. I'll be honest with you. Uh, Tamara. Yes, now, does she, is it, I met her before. Is it Tamara or Tamara? Tamara. I Tamara, believe. okay, all right. That's I, how I, I've been seeing it. Yeah, like, and I feel bad. I'm only seeing that because we addressed her on our conversation as Tammy. Mm -hmm. So I've heard Tamara and I've heard Tamara. Yeah, and see, I feel bad because I met her before. I met Tamara, a Tam a Tamara. We call her Tammy. We, I met Tammy before um, when she was early on in the sport. I was, I was in Maryland one day traveling for work, I had to find a gym to train at, and I ended up at their gym. Um, Super nice, super nice. But at the time, I don't think she realized her potential, which most of us don't in the very beginning. Right. You know, and um, so I feel bad. That I, I can't recall. I can't remember how she introduced herself to me, but I'm glad that she was able to do what she did because I think it helped all women in the sport when she did it. Now, granted, someone else could have come along too. I mean, we we all know in this in this generation of going viral, it's just about kind of being lucky sometimes. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, anyone else could have you could have been the person who broke a record and, and it went viral. Right. But um, it happened to her at the right time. And I've been happy to see how she's tried to bring women along with her and not I just say, hey, look at me, look at me, look at me. All of us, not just yeah. Her. Like every time you talk, every time she interviews, it's always about women, women, women. That's pretty dope. Uh, I've been trying to get her on. But of course, naturally, she's super busy right now. Like she's she needs a fucking publicist, I think, because she, she <laughs> so much. <laughs> uh, so what is it with uh, women in powerlifting? I see this new movement you guys have been posting about and talking about. So the funny thing is, I was texting her before, was it Ghost Clash was the last meet that she did? We were texting before that. And she was talking about the world record for her squat. And I was like, sis, I'm going to be watching. Sink mm -hmm. that shit. Because like we know that's been your issue, the issue before. She's had mm -hmm. calls on depth. So I was like, leave no doubt. You know you're strong enough. You know, just giving her pep talk, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so when I was competing, she was messaging me and I struggled this last training cycle because my deadlifts failed me at the showdown. And I've never had that happen. I've had other lifts go to crap and it was just like, whatever, but the bar hits the floor, I'm ready to party. That's always been my thing. Yeah. And so missing going one for three at the showdown and ended up finishing second, I just felt like, I didn't get beat. I beat me. Mm -hmm. And that never sits well because I knew what happened going into it, mm -hmm. that my training cycle didn't finish the best. There was too much stress. There was a lot of stuff going on. But just to have that feeling like you feel like you sabotaged yourself, especially with something that you know means that much to you. I couldn't sleep. I thought about quitting. I'm not even going to lie. Like I got yeah. home and I was like, you talk about you love this sport, but you didn't act like it. Like yeah. you're a fraud. Like, what do you, I was, it was close. Yeah. And then I was like, I'm gonna pick another meet. I'm gonna get my shit together. And I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that this one turns out right. And if I don't get it right this time, I'm gonna go sit my ass down because there's nothing else I could do at this point. Maybe it's you, too you, much. You gotta have it up here. You, it has to be here. Oh. You have to, yeah. But it's still just, even on a good day, I'm like, okay, well, I had good days last training cycle, so how do I know it's going to be there at the meet? 
And so it was crazy that she was messaging me during my deadlifts. And she was like, you worked your ass off. You good. Come on. I know you strong. You got it. And she was sending me voice messages and texting me. And I didn't realize she had sent me a voice message asking if I wanted to be part of a movement mm -hmm. that she was trying to put together because we're trying to get on ESPN. Like we want yeah. the big and not just one meet, but an actual movement to showcase what we do, what we've been through, why we feel like it's so important for women to have a voice and be able to stand up for themselves mm -hmm. and not just let other people tell them, this is how you need to act. This is what you need to look like. This is what you need to do to be considered a woman. Yeah. And yeah. so I didn't answer because I didn't hear the message. I was deadlifting. Mm -hmm. And then she texted me again after and was like, hey, I don't know if you heard my message, but we have a call that we're about to get on and we want to talk about what we want to accomplish with this. You've been in the game a long time. I love seeing you lift. Would you be a part? First of all, tell me when and where. Don't ask me. <laughs> the answer is yes. It is not even a question. Yeah. So it's uh, some women that I haven't even had a chance to talk to or meet yet. So I love that aspect of it because I'm also getting to meet other women. But I got to make sure when we were on our call, I think I'm the oldest one in the game, in powerlifting of mm -hmm. the group. Yeah. And so it was kind of just like, like, I know I've been in it for a while and I know I've been doing it for a while, but I guess I didn't realize how long mm. until I started seeing all these lifters the past couple years. And I'm like, where did she come yeah. from? Who, who is that? Me? Yeah. And, and, the, and the crazy thing is, it's not only who is that, it's like, what the fuck did I just see? It's Why? like, who are you? And you just like, <laughs> yeah. My little surgeries and I'm like, okay, I'm going to be able to come back. And I'm gonna hit the numbers I did before, and those numbers had me in the top ten. So yeah. I'm gonna just get back to those numbers, and I'll be back in the top nah, end. Not today, you won't. Nah. Not in I, this day. I tell people a lot of times because you know people will come to me and say, "Man, you know, you always seem to be very humble." I said, "Bro, in the sport of pilot, you can't help be humble because, especially with social media now, you'll <laughs> fuck around and find an 18 year old somewhere in Idaho that's busting your ass with some with some cinder blocks and some guy <laughs> a tree branch, you know, like." <laughs> laughing because i was watching jasmine uh is it pin is her last name it's yeah. a girl who competes in the usapl yeah yeah and COVID, this chick was pulling tractors and yeah. like i'm like that's yeah. corn fed and i mean she's strong muscular gorgeous yeah and i was just like i don't even like outside but i would go work out with her like yeah. i would definitely do it I, I, that's why that's what drew me to the sport the most beginning because all the camaraderie man like it was just you know, that's what I felt at first. And, you know, you get a little deeper into it and you see some of the riffs here and there, but you no, know, that's another, another conversation for another day. Um, so with the movement, what are you guys trying to do? You're trying to get on ESPN, trying to take it mainstream, yeah. trying to encourage other women, I guess, to embrace themselves, be, maybe try to sport. They want to try to sport the whole nine. Yeah. And I think the biggest thing for me, I get a lot of people because I've been coaching for almost five years now. I get a lot of women who are like, oh, I wish I could do what you do. Because. You may not, but then at the same time, on the flip side, I get a lot of women that tell me, well, I want to lose weight, but I don't want to look like you. Yeah. Okay, honey, first of all, you wouldn't because you don't know <laughs> what it took to get to this look. Exactly. And I don't even think I look like whatever, but mainly just to tell them like, you don't have to be at a certain level to start. You don't oh, have yeah. to have a certain accomplishment before you start. And if nothing else, Start for the support system. Start for the mental health. Mm. That is the reason why I have no intentions of quitting anytime soon. It's not because, you know, I don't know if this meet I just did is the best meet I ever do for the rest of my life. Mm. I'm still going to live that high, but I'm still going to keep lifting yeah. because mentally it keeps me in check. It keeps me because I'm so obsessive compulsive. When I wasn't lifting, I was drinking four or five days a week. Mm -hmm. I'm doing drugs and yeah, yeah. not being present for my family, not being present for my mm -hmm. friends. I just did not care about myself. Yeah. So this is more just, you know, the mom shaming that goes on because how are you in the gym four days a week, two, three hours, and you got kids? How are you sitting on the sofa watching TV four or five hours a day and you have kids. Or how, how are you, or, or how are you every, you, you're every move, every music festival that comes out. How are you, <laughs> you know, how are you in everybody, in everybody's, uh, what they call a section in the club. Like, yeah, you got the same question, but. Yeah, yeah. So it's more or less just 
helping women who haven't had a voice find one, even if we're the ones that have to give it to them. Yeah. Because I didn't have a voice and I battled with people telling me what I should look like. So, okay, I shouldn't lose any more weight, but somebody else told me I was fat. Like in high school, I'm a size two, size four. Mm -hmm. I walk by a group of guys and they're beeping, talking about wide load coming through. Yeah. When I was at my heaviest, nobody told me I needed to lose weight. Yeah. When I'm driving home drunk and don't remember who drove home the next day, nobody told me, Barbara, you need to get help. That's not healthy. Yeah. But y'all telling me I need help because I want to go to the, the gym. gym every day. You're yeah. telling me I'm not fun because I don't want to drink with you. So I think the biggest thing is just letting other women know. Just because you don't have help where you are, like directly around you doesn't mean you can't reach out and get it somewhere else. And there's so many different women and we're all so different that I feel like we can, we can be relatable to everybody. Yeah. We're white, black, we have plus size, we have mm -hmm. smaller lifters, like middle lifters, we have older, we have younger. It's the whole gamut of just, what you looking for? We're Baskin yeah. Robbins, all the flavors, what yeah, you exactly. want? And it was crazy about competition. I've been in meets where, a guy's belt will break and the guy he's competing with say, man, take him on real quick. Yep. And so, you know, you mentioned earlier in the very first part of the conversation about how your family, friends, people you grew up with, they didn't understand what it was. When you walk into a family or you get adopted by a family that understands you, it, it's easy to just get engulfed in their lifestyle. And so you talk right. about not never wanting to quit. You're right. It's probably not so much about, am I going to break another record? But it's like I, I enjoy being around the sport. I enjoy being around the people. You know, when when, when you mess when I saw you post about Queen of the South the other day, I told you I might get a chance to come. And I'm sorry I couldn't make it, but I was trying to come. And I told you in the mess, I said, yo, I just I just want to be around the fellas again. I haven't been around the guys that I meet in, in two or three years now. Well, we had and, a lot of guys show up. I was pretty excited about I mean, that. We yeah, even yeah. had a guy, um, Brian, I believe his name, Brian Smitty. He's a coach, um, elite physique fitness messaged me the week of and was like, hey, I know this is a women's event or whatever, but I want to sponsor some money. Y'all still taking sponsors? And I was like, you're the only guy that's even asked. Yeah. And that just made me feel good because I was like, he knows that this is bigger than just us. Mm -hmm. And we're not discriminating against men by any means. But a lot of people think this is what men are supposed to do. Yeah. I've had other guys tell me like, that is not ladylike at all. First of all, cursing is not ladylike. I yeah. do it. Drinking well, is not ladylike. I do it. Well, like, well, you, you, you have having some ties in the South. You probably heard this old this old saying before. Probably say, well, I know somebody who like it. <laughs> you like it, I love it. Yeah, I know, right? You know, man, um, you know, I, and, and no men face it too. Like I, I've in my life, you know, before I, I started seeing seeing who I'm seeing now, uh, I've dated women who 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 appreciated what I did, then there's some who who didn't quite understand they say fuck it i'll just go with it and then some who just shunned it you know I, I i remember one person telling me one time like directly we had known each other when we were younger and we ran across each other again when i was at, like the height of my you know me lifting and so i mean i'm look way different than i did and i remember her distinctly saying like yeah i'm not attracted to you anymore that that's too much right and so i, mean, I didn't give a fuck at the time but it was just <laughs> the fact we had a conversation so when you're around people who get it and who understand it you know and so mm -hmm. I, I, I like being able to tell people now, like, yeah, I know somebody who like it. So fuck you, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up, man. Um, queen of the South meet. How did that, I mean, how did that come to be? Your queen of the South meet? Normally for my birthday, I have a deadlift party. I don't care where I am. I'm going to find some meatheads that want to move some weight and we're going to have a party. And so this year I was talking to Steve Goggins about meets for USPA Georgia for the year. And I was like, ooh, can we have a meet in March for my birthday? And this is going to be different because I'm turning 40. So it's not just going to be like, I want to do more than just a deadlift party. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, that sounds cool. And I said, but I want it to be women's only. You think that's going to fill up? I said, maybe if we do it early enough. It we didn't do it early enough. And I had about eight to 10 weeks. Yeah. You know, that's not a lot of time for anybody who actually wants like new lifters they can jump in and yeah, meet. they can jump I, in they can do a six week yeah yeah like yeah. It matter. but i was trying yeah. to get bigger lifters to come because we had cash yeah i gave and I, that one thing that i loved was that i wanted to try to make it different from any meets i had been to i've never been to an all women's meet it's still on my bucket list but 
Have you ever gone to a meet where the, all the first place winners got cash? No. We did that. Yeah. And we did best, biggest squat, biggest bench, biggest deadlift. Mm -hmm. And then we also gave three overall cash prizes too. And we had gift cards. Like it was such a big deal. I wish it would have been bigger, but at the same time, we had 27 lifters, I think. The people that they brought with them yeah. made it feel like it was a 60 lifter meet. I mean, it's, it's, the, it's the inaugural, man. There you go. And it was just, it. I, I was like, I'm going to try not to cry because I had a group that came in from <laughs> Florida and they were like, we weren't really ready for this, but you know what? Because of you, because it's you and what you're trying to do, there's no way we would miss it. Yeah, I saw what was the young lady, the girl from Florida name, uh, I think she met one, um, Sarah, is it Sarah? Sarah Strong, Sarah cracked me up. She, she's, strong as, she's strong as hell, man. The meet I did in Florida, we were going head to head. And mm -hmm. I was nervous because I've seen her squat and I'm like, ooh, she's got a big yeah. squat. And my yeah. squat is not quite there yet. So I'm like, okay, she has a decent bench, but she would never post her deadlift. Mm -hmm. And so we, me and C were talking about it and he was like, you might be all right. If she's not posting deads, you don't know what her deads are. You know, we'll just have to see on meet day. And so I ended up, I think she was ahead of me or it was kind of close. I think I was like six dots points ahead of her before deadlifts. Mm -hmm. And then deadlifts, I took off. Yeah. But she, like afterwards we hugged and it was just like, girl, you're intense. Girl, you're intense. Mm -hmm. Let's take a shot. Like party yeah, yeah. already. But she told me at the women's meet, she said, I've been talking to all my friends about you and just how strong you are and how amazing you are and how nice you are, even though you seem like you're scary. She said, but I ain't gonna lie. I was mad because you came to my city and took my money. So I told them I'm going to your city and I'm thinking, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Girl, don't make me go find somebody singly. <laughs> but at the same time, I was just like, that's what I wanted. And she is, I don't know if it was her everybody's telling me it's me because Taylor Stallings, you know who that is, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've been a fan of this woman forever. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, I go in the warm-up room at um, Battle of the Bay and she's there. And I'm like, Bullshit. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? I'm looking at you like that. And I'm like, uh -uh, no way. So we started talking and I was like, so you're going to come to my meeting? She was like, I haven't competed in nine years. I'm retired. And yeah. I was like, yeah, so you're going to come to my meet? And she was like, I, I don't compete anymore. But that's fine. So you're going to come to my <laughs> meet? <laughs> she said, I'll think about it. And I was yeah. like, great. That's what, And the next thing you know, she was there. Yeah. And I was like, if nothing else. And she said, I did it because of you, because of what you're trying to build. And you're changing her story, not history. So mm -hmm. I was like, like that. don't make me be it's dope, man. I, I like it. I mean, we we need, I mean, the men, it's probably if there's both male and female, we're both clawing for someone to, to take the sport serious. Right. Exactly. And, yeah. And and for for and for the guys who feel like we don't need the women, then they're sadly mistaken. Like we need both. Um in 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 a very screwed up society, I think it's gonna almost need to be accepted by the accepted for women to do it for it to really go mainstream like that's what that's really that's probably really what's going to hold it. it's something like bodybuilding like you know they took female uh they took uh the physique they took physique away from female, women bodybuilding for a while because they were trying to go mainstream and that was going to hold them back then you know years later held down a decade later they still hadn't done it they said fuck it we just bring it back and say, no it is what right. it is right. we need both we need the men and the women to both take off um and it's, it's i don't know what it's going to take you know i talked to maca moreno uh, we I had him on a few episodes ago and he has plans for his meet and how he's trying to make it like he's, he, he said he wants to be the um which meet the pro meet yeah the pro meet I'm going that's my next all right meet. and it, I don't know if you talked to him about what he's what he's planning but I said bro you maybe want to go to prep like it's it sounds exciting as shit yeah he sent me a video of what like the area is gonna look like and what they're planning on yeah. doing and I was just like I don't, I was like, okay, so what day it's Friday and Saturday. Mm -hmm. I want to compete on Friday. What I need to put on to compete on Friday is yeah. I want to party on Saturday. I want to be at the VIP tables Dude, next to the platform. Like, it's I gonna just, be on. 
And the thing is, the hard, the hardest part for me is knowing that I'm going into those meets, I'm not going to win. Like, I'm going to be completely honest. Mm. I'm not going to win. It is what it is. But the fact that I even get invited, the fact that I'm qualified to go, mm. I'm going to put on a show. Yeah. And it's not always, yeah, the big lifters get a lot of hype, but we do too, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it's like, yeah, I want to win. But at the end of the day, my goal for that meet, so I've done, since I've been back, my first meet back was 165 raw. Then I did, and I almost weighed in at 165. That's very good <laughs> for me. Um, then my second meet was 165 in wraps. Mm -hmm. Then my third meet was the showdown. I did 148 raw. So then this meet, I just did 148 wraps. So I'm mm -hmm. like, all right, let's circle back. I'm going to do, because the wrap day is Friday, I'm doing 165. I haven't told them yet, but I'm changing. Okay. Um, 165 in wraps. And my goal for that meet is to, well, it was to beat my previous total, which was 1220, mm -hmm. but I just hit 1219 at 148. So I guess I got to bump that up some. I'm not talking numbers. I, I'm going to get in my head, but hey, I want it to be better than my games. last meet. That's rule number um, one. You don't talk numbers, right? Yeah, but... <laughs> I just, I was like, okay, I need to make sure that I'm not just stuck in a rut doing the same thing. It helps me, it helps keep me excited. It helps save my knee, switching wraps to raw. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it keeps me excited about training too. So I'm going to do that one. And then I signed up for the, what is it? The Pro Raw Challenge in September that the USPA is doing. And I'm going to do that one at 148, which is basically the replacement for the showdown. Mm. So it's kind of like that's going to be my redemption meet, 148. <sighs> and then that'll be it for the year. So I'll get to enjoy my holidays. I don't have to worry about being in prep and mm. all that stuff. But yeah, I'm really hoping that the women in powerlifting movement takes off because I just feel like it's time, you know, especially yeah. with, I call her Dove. So that's one of her nicknames um, with Tamara to marry. Okay, 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 okay. Mm. The first time she introduced herself to me, it was dumb. Hmm. Um, but just the fact that, like I said earlier, she's she's not being selfish with the limelight. You know, hmm. she's just like, yeah, I did this. And guess what? There's all these women back here doing the same hmm. thing. So let's, yeah. let's, let's let them all get a little light. You use some verbiage just now. Uh, you said, no matter whether you're going to win or not, you're going to put, put on a show. You're going to be entertaining. And I think that might, and I think Mike and I talked about that. I think that's the sprinkling on top that we're missing. Um, an everyday, and I don't like to say average, but an everyday Joe who sees a damn bell squat a thousand pounds, he's impressed, but he's in, is he entertained, right. right? You know, they see you know Tamara tomorrow. We, we'll, we'll get it right for us over with. Yeah. They see her, it's like okay, I'm impressed, but am I entertained? All right, but when you have people who have personality, who brings intensity to the, to the thing, when you have a meet director who, who cares about, you know, the, the setup and, and no. the whole deal, that's what's going to do it. You know, that's what's going to do it. I mean, think about it. VIP at a, at a pilot to be, who ever thought about it? But it's kind of cool, right? If you, have, if you have access to be able to sit at your table and kind of see some of the behind the scenes, what's going on, and hear what's going on up on the platform, hear the intensity, that's, that's sellable. And the thing is, I'm a lifter. So why do I need to be there? Because it's dope. Like exactly. I was like, like, I was like, oh, how much for the tables? And they told me, and I was like, here's my money. Take my yeah. money because I don't care. I want to be there. So so think about this. The Olympia bodybuilding, right? <clears throat> all the all the, the spectators come to the come to the to the deal. And then all the old heads, the runnies, the 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 Sean Rays, the Phil, they come and it's like VIP status. They like they stroll right. in. They hold precedent still whether they're competing or not. And if you if you hold a meet like what, what Micah's doing and a Barber Lee walks in or Dan Bill walks, they're not competing. They just walk in. Like it makes it a it makes it a fucking event. Like it makes it a whole fucking vibe. You know what I mean? Like, so then as someone who's a true fan of the sport, they can come watch whoever compete and then still have a chance to just shake their hands with Dan or or maybe bump into Barber at the concession stand or fucking have a drink with whoever. Like that's dope. That's what and I was need. laughing because there's a girl that I've become friends with since the showdown. We met in the bathroom and she was like, oh my God, I've been following you for such a long time. You are so intense. Like, I'm so yeah. impressed by what you do. And I was like, girl, come give me a hug. What you talking about? Like, yeah. I don't ever think of myself like that. Like, 
he will come up oh can i take a picture and i'm like why <laughs> and it was funny it, you're, you're not rude it's, for me it's a little bit it's a little bit of social anxiety yeah and, and, and i've yeah. told people who met me before once they get to know me finally i say you know sometimes for someone to approach me and ask me to take a picture or whatever i'm actually more nervous that they at the encounter than maybe they are right you know, but it's the whole way i'm like don't say something stupid i was like y'all don't yeah. understand if yeah. i walk into a room with people i'm not walking in like mm -hmm, everybody's yeah. looking at me I'm walking in like, okay, because I used to have this thing when I first started working out, I walked like this. I looked at the floor, shoulders forward, didn't want people to notice me, didn't want people to look at me. And then my first trainer, every time he'd see me, he'd chin check me, pick your head up, yeah. pick your head up. And so I was like, well, I don't want to. And then I started doing it. So now yeah. I walk around like this, but it's not because I think I'm the shit. It's because I used to walk with my head down all yeah. the time. And so it just, it always catches me off guard because I'm walking, but I'm literally thinking, don't fall. Don't embarrass yourself. <laughs> don't fall. Every single time. And I'm so focused on that. People are like, you walking around with RBF. No, I'm walking around with social anxiety. Like, don't make an ass out of myself. Yeah. Y'all yeah. have no idea what's going so, on. Right? Tell, you, tell you another funny story about the Pioneer that year. That's the first year I met Gary Fear, right? And so, uh, so we're in the, we're in the, um, we're in weigh-ins that morning. And I'll be honest, with you, I was I was dialed in that meat. Like I, everything went perfect for me that week. My my that meat, my diet, everything. My like, so I cut weight to like just shy of two seventy five. I got up the next morning before I walked downstairs. I was at two ninety. That's how my refeed went. Like I was dialed in, right? So I'm standing there weigh in, and I'm nervous as shit. Really, is what it is. I'm nervous as a motherfucker. Like I'm around. I never met Yuri Belkin before. I'm Yuri's right there. Like I'm nervous as shit, right? And Gary looks up at me in true Gary fat form. He says, "Dude, you got a rested bitch face. What the fuck?" <laughs> and it just broke me. I was like, "Oh damn, I guess I do." And that's how Gary and I met. We got kind of cool sitting right there on the floor. So um, I get it. I hundred percent get it. I have to get it. One thing I do want to touch. On. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. It is about Yuri. So I'm the same way. I see Yuri, and I'm like. Dude, I told I, I told my boys when I got back home, I said, Yuri Belkin, and I'm sure he's not. It's probably sensitive to say right now because of what's going on in the country, in the world, but I would not be surprised if Yuri Belkin was not a Russian assassin. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen him at Boss of Bosses. I saw him at the tribute. When I was at Boss of Bosses, I don't know why I thought I would be able to wrap somebody's knees and still have a good bench. For a meet, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I did it. All right, and you know, you tried. I was wrapping somebody's knees for that meet, and they were. I think the person they were going before was like in mid squat, so they put it up. They mm -hmm. load the bar. They're gonna say platform ready, mm -hmm. and I'm still mid wrap. Yeah, I'm wrapping. I'm kind of getting nervous, and I'm I lose it. And the shit starts coming unwrapped. Oh, shit. So they slap their hand on their knee to stop it. And I'm like, fuck. Like, I start freaking. Yeah. Yuri's yeah. sitting next to him. And Yuri says to me, you're fine. You have time. And, and listen, dude. Look, Yuri's sense of calm. Like, <laughs> like, he'll talk to me himself. Like, yeah. I was fine. I finished the rap. Squat was done. But I yeah. was like. Dude, he 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 has he has ice water in his veins. I don't know. Oh my god, he's different. He's definitely different. Yeah. Uh, something I do want to make sure to touch on. I can't be, I can't not touch on this. Your YouTube channel. Um, I'm sure people follow you. Uh, I'm sure a lot of women are maybe a friend fan of your YouTube channel. Um, I'll be lying if I said I watched any of your videos intently. I don't know no. if I would have reason to, <laughs> but <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I subscribe and I, I do like videos every now and then just for, for the algorithm if nothing algorithm if nothing yeah. else, but. I have watched a few of them. They are pretty interesting. Um, I think you you built out like a, a wardrobe closet or something, a makeup room one time. Uh, you do a lot of makeup tutorial. There you go, a lot of makeup tutorials. Um, different, it's a lot, right? Um, so women, I'll definitely have all her information in the caption. I guarantee you're gonna wanna follow her. Um, how did you make up fashion, the whole deal? What, how did that become a thing for you? Like what happened? What Was it always that way for you? What happened? No, makeup was actually before powerlifting. And it was a coping mechanism because I'm a hide. So I can put on makeup and it, when I turned 30, I don't know what happened to my hormones, but my body went nuts and I had really bad acne 
And then I had really bad acne scars. And in my mind, I was like, nobody's paying attention to that. Nobody cares. Mm. And then a family member, lo and behold, sees me who hadn't seen me in a couple of years. And the first thing out their mouth is, holy shit, what happened to your face? And so it messed with me. And so I was like, I'm going to find makeup. So I started wearing makeup because I did not want to be vulnerable. And then I started kind of getting into the artistry of it, but I wasn't great at it. I didn't watch YouTube videos. I just slapped a color on and slapped another color. No kind of blending, no nothing. I see old pictures and I'm like, why didn't somebody say something to me? Um, So I've always been into makeup, but then I remember one of the first Gracie posted a meet day makeup video. And I was like, interesting, because I've been doing that, but I didn't know about some of the products she mentioned. And I was like, that's kind of cool. And my son was like, mom, you should do YouTube. And I was like, boy, I don't go outside to check the mail without my face. Being <laughs> so you know, I'm not getting on worldwide yeah. internet without makeup on. And he was like, mama, some women need your help. And I was like, I don't care. There's a Sephora class. Yeah. There are other places they can go. Nobody's like, what if powerlifters see me like that? Like people mm-hmm. see me, they see what I want them to see. Yeah. So that was my anxiety more than anything else. Like people actually seeing me without makeup on. Mm-hmm. I'm tired of hearing you look tired. You look this like, oh, I didn't know you had under eye circles. I didn't know you had acne like that. Like just people yeah. are so mean. Like I know what I look yeah. like. I don't know yeah. So you know, COVID, hurt people, but hurt people hurt people. You know that right. There you go. So COVID happened and I had a lot of downtime working from home. And I was like, you know what? I did my little closet. It looks like a beauty room. I'm gonna just do it. I'm gonna do a video. And my very first video was how to do your eyebrows. So that one I still got to put makeup on and then only do my eyebrows. And then one of my first videos where I did a detailed makeup video, it was I called it lipstick and libations. And I was drinking because I was nervous. And so I started drinking first Mm -hmm. and then I started doing my face and got into it. And then I was like, you know what? People don't care. You've seen other people, maybe people want to watch my channel because they want to learn how to cover their acne scars or their dark Mm -hmm. circles or whatever. But then it turned into, I named my channel Beauty in Strength. And -hmm. it was because kind of what we're doing with the women, women powerlifting movement, it was more just, you don't have to accept people telling you you're going to look like a man. You don't have to think just because you have muscles, you still can't get glammed up and be pretty. Mm -hmm. And if you do have muscles, you can still apply makeup if you want to. I'm not saying you have to. It's not for everybody. But the whole purpose of that channel, I also did some training videos on there. I did a bench press video and a back day video, but this was still also right after my surgery. So I didn't really feel comfortable trying to do like, this is how your squat technique could be because my squat technique was trash. I was still shifting and everything else. Um, So I do want to get into doing more training videos. Mm -hmm. It's just, we squat bench and deadlift. There's only so many videos that you can do about that before it gets old. Mm -hmm. So I need to do more. And people have been asking like, why don't you post your meat stuff? And honestly, I don't have a photographer, like a video person following me everywhere. I tell tell people all the time, bro, like show me a videographer who wants to work for free and I'll show you everything I do every day. Like it doesn't work that way. (laughs) I mean, it's just, I got to pay for you to get to the meat. I got to pay for you to video me. I got to pay for the edits. I got to pay that's starting to be a lot. Don't think about that part of it. Yeah, so YouTube is mostly makeup, a little bit of fitness, started, and then I started even doing other stuff out my comfort zone, and I'm like, okay, I see all these women with wigs and different hair extensions, and I don't know anything about that, so now I want to learn how to do that too, so it's just been something to challenge myself, Mm -hmm. but also just like, hey, if you want to try something new, I don't know anything, and I'm trying it, or if you want help learning something, like I've since had people message me asking me questions about stuff and again for me it's just like hey if i can find a way to help i want to do it yeah yeah last 10 minutes um your team your coaching give us a little bit about that because she is a badass coach as well as a badass lifter so you might want to hear what she has to say about this guys and girls so my team is relentless power systems and i picked that name because that is me like i'm not stopping It's funny because one of the guys said to me this weekend, Barbara is a bulldog. And I was like, I kind of 
like that. Mm. And one of the other guys that used to, I used to train with was like, she's always been like that for as long as I've known her. Mm. And I don't even realize that about myself. So it's good. It's like, it makes you feel good to hear that. But also for me, it's more, I'm glad that I'm leaving that impression and I'm not trying. That's what makes me feel better about it. I'm not out there trying to be like, everybody look at me, look at what I do. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just like, I'm going to go have fun and hopefully it motivates somebody else or inspires somebody else to want to try it or just make some kind of life change that they need to make that they didn't think they could. Um, I waited a while before I started coaching because I was not about to be one of those that I just did a meet my first meet and now I'm a coach. Now I'm a coach, yeah. Um, right. And I also was not gonna do I read a book and took some classes and got some numbers after my name. So now I'm a coach. Mm. So I wanted to make sure that I had experience, that I had exposure to different coaches, so different coaching styles mm-hmm. and different types of programs because not everything works for everybody. So my programming is pretty much. Yes, again, we squat, bench, and deadlift. There's only so many variations you can do, but my program is heavy on accessory work. So you're going to do your big three, but you're going to spend some time in the gym and you're going to be sore after because it's a hybrid. So you do your big three and we do sets of 10. If you don't like volume, don't call me, don't text me, don't ask me because that's what you If you're new, I might let you start with a five by five or a five by six, but you're going to work up to 10. Actually, I feel like if someone was new that, I my advice and take it from whatever you think I'm my whatever merit I guess I have to say this I think young lifters would probably benefit from their style of training before jumping and into honestly yeah. because a lot of times they need technical help mm-hmm. and I believe that under a set of 10 if it's heavy enough by the time you get to eight nine ten that starts feeling like second attempt third attempt and i'm going to start seeing where your form breaks down Mm -hmm. but it's less of a risk because the weight isn't so heavy Yep, exactly. so that is why i like doing that it's also about conditioning it's also about building muscle but i've just always felt my mental toughness is challenged the most at the end of a heavy set of 10 versus doing a heavy single or a heavy double because by number eight my best set of 10 squatting before i got hurt was like 340 for a set of 10 and I weighed about 155. Mm. I died. Like I literally couldn't walk the weight back in Mm -hmm. and had to get some people to put it back. And I sat on the floor because I was dead. But the sense of accomplishment by rep eight, I was like, I'm going to finish and I have spotters if I don't. And it just, I feel like it's a good way to help build confidence and it's a help, a good way to help build strength. But Again, you also got to train guys different from the way you train girls. So some of my guys will get set to 10, depending on if they like a challenge (laughs) or if they're just like, "Ah, I can't handle. Okay, well, you're going to take shorter breaks between your sets and you're going to do sets of five and you're going to do more sets. Um, But the biggest thing is just I am a firm believer in you have to talk to your athletes. I am the coach. I write the program. But if I'm not there with you when you're training, or even when I am, I can't see what's happening with you. Yeah, you, gotta, you gotta I can't see what you're feeling. So you have to talk to me. Mm-hmm. If you tell me, coach, I feel like my right leg is lagging behind the left one. If I'm standing behind you, spotting you, I can't see that. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to listen to you. So guess what? Now we're going to do some isolated work. You're going to go do one leg at this. You're going to do Bulgarian split squats. You're going to do lunges. You know, you're going to do single leg leg extensions. If you tell me, you know, oh, my lower back or something. Okay, we're going to go do hyper extensions. We're going to go do reverse hypers. But if I'm not making you feel like you can talk to me and have a voice in your training, yeah, how is that supposed to work? That's a problem. Yeah, you have to. You have to. Yeah, so that's pretty much what it is. I love when my athletes, like, I'll talk to them. I'll tell them stuff. I'll try to explain stuff. Sometimes cues don't connect the way we want them to. I'm like, I know this makes sense. How they don't understand. Yeah, but, but, they don't. Doing, but you've been doing right. it for a long time. Yeah. So um, I, say something, I try to say it another way. I try to say it another way. And I'm like, okay, we're going to keep working on it. I'm going to figure out a way to make it make sense. Mm-hmm. And I know they hear me and it actually makes me feel good when they come. Damn near I do. All right. There you go. Um, 
But it doesn't bother me if my athletes come to me and show me videos of another coach saying something similar to what I said, mm -hmm. if it makes sense to them. And it's like, oh, so they're saying this and that's what you meant when you said this. Yes, exactly. Yeah. I'm not butthurt. I'm not jealous. I'm not offended. Like I want my lifter success. So yeah. I don't care where they hear it from. I don't take offense to that. I don't feel like it takes away from my coaching. Mm -hmm. And I also don't get upset if they say, okay, so we've been working on this and we've identified this is wrong with me. I saw this exercise. What do you think about me implementing it in my training? Mm -hmm. Yes, I think this will work because X, Y, Z or no, I don't think it'll work because X, Y, Z. But I don't get offended that they're asking me questions. I don't feel like it's challenging me in a negative way. If anything, it's making me think outside the box. Mm -hmm. You know, so I just feel like I don't want anybody to hear that and be like oh so Barbara just lets her athletes run over her and lets them do what they want no I don't because I fired some of them because they don't listen mm -hmm. I do this for fun I do this as a hobby I don't do it for the money so I don't just keep any athlete that's not going to follow the program but yeah. I'm very open to talking to my lifters about what they want out of the program what their goals are and I'm very honest if <laughs> one of my favorites um his Instagram is Black Papa Smurf Gerald Pippins yeah. He was like, man, B don't play. He was like, what's up? <laughs> and I was like, B, I want to do this for this meet. And she was like, nah, Gerald, that ain't going to happen for this meet. <laughs> He's like, she is very, she's strict. She is not for everybody. And that is very true. He was like, but she gives 100% to her lifters. She's very invested in them. And he he's made huge PRs. And a lot of it is mental. For him yeah. because kind of like how you you're close to your dad he was close to his dad too and he told mm -hmm. me when my dad passed away i kind of lost that mentality of needing to fight and he's like and working with you i tell my athletes fight for me i'm right here with you i got you don't give up on me and he was like i hate disappointing you it makes me feel the same way and you've helped get that spark back in me so that's it i'm a mama bear I can chew your ass or I can pat you on the back. <laughs> well, I will say this, you know, and, and I get often asked sometimes, you know, how do you, how should someone choose a coach? And I've always said, whoever you communicate best with. Right. You want something to think about. So Barbara, look, man, I really, really appreciate you coming on. All right. Thank Didn't get a chance to touch on all my notes, but I think we got some good stuff in. Had to have you back again sometime, I guess. Um, anyone who wants to follow Barbara, again, all of her information will be in the caption. Um, again, thank you. All right. Thank you. We have to get together sometime and I guess get a lift in when I start back. I guess I'll start back piloting one day. I don't know. You'll be back. <laughs> All right, Barbara. I appreciate you, girl. Take care. All right. Thank you.